Hey, what's slicing everybody? Chris back with the CAC knives here. And today I figured we'd do my uh, Rough Rider and traditional folding knife collection video. Um, not a huge amount has changed since last year. Um, there's been a couple of new additions I'd say to this collection, but it's also a good chance to allow everybody to just sit back and see how wide of a variety of a collection you can get with Rough Riders, which I highly recommend, um, you know, to expand your collection. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, I actually have two in this series. I have the little toothpick and um, the, I believe this is the Trapper. Yep, Trapper's my favorite. So you'll probably see trapper designs more than any of the others um and this is their gold series now some of these rough riders are available still and some of them are not so it kind of varies uh, but i'm mainly in this video going to be showing off the knife itself with the stamps the different kinds of stamps as well as what they put on the blade um strike it rich gold pan it dig it find it i love these rough rider knives um they're so unique and so cool and they're pretty easy to afford as well now with the different designs you'll have different things on the blades um for example the toothpick just has the cold it pan it dig it find it very small so and like I say, these knives, you know, they're not too, too expensive at all. Um, and I do think they are worth their price. Um, but let's move on here. Let's go through all the ones that have Mother of Pearl in my collection. Um, oh man, off the top of my head, I can't remember what material this is. This is actually a gym material. I want to say like fluoride or something like that, but I may be wrong uh, with three mother of pearl inlays on each side. Let's see if there's on anything on these blades. There's not things on every blade. Um, yeah, see these just have regular blades. Now I will say a lot of time Rough Riders in the mail. Um, if you want to make them perfect, you got to clean them up. Now I'm just wiping my fingerprints off so you guys can see the real beauty in these knives they're actually very nice uh, i'm i'm very impressed overall i mean you'll find things in rough rider sometimes like little tiny imperfections but yeah you know, maybe a little spaces or something you can see there's a little gap there but you know <clears throat> for 10 to 20 dollars you can't really be that picky right and you know you can have a really big collection really fast let's go into the next one this was the uh the Blue Swirl series, I believe, which is very similar to this one, of course, if you can't tell. Just a little bit of change in materials. We got some blue kind of pearl resin in there. And I don't believe anything is on these blades either. Um, let's just make sure. And like I said, some of these, um, some of these styles are still available. And some of them are not and there are styles that I don't have in my collection that are available I'm not necessarily a huge fan of bone on knives so I don't really have any of those to show um, at least I don't think sitting here looking at them all this was a Christmas special one um, so this one I know got sold out so this one you'd have to get on the secondary market um, has these green inlays of some sort I'm not sure what material that is but then it has the uh, brown pearl resin and some other pearl in there and it, uh, I believe this is a large canoe I want to say is what these are called um, but there it has the Merry Christmas on this one and the year stamped down there so yeah that was the special edition Christmas one for 2020 very much like that one and then the last one that i have has mother of pearl this was one of the stonework series which they have a lot in this series but it has a piece of abalone in the middle with a few different types of 
um, gemstones in here. I'm not 100% sure on the exact names of these gemstones off the top of my head. And then you got some mother of pearl at the end, and it kind of gives a red, white, and blue color scheme to the knife, which I very much like. And um, let's get all the blades out for this one. Let's wipe them all off real quick. Get my fingerprints off there. Uh, we got two basic blades and we got the stoneworks. It's a little Rough Rider horseshoe this time. You don't always see the horseshoe um, on the knives. But yeah, that's quite possibly my favorite one um, out of all the Rough Riders that I own. All right, so that was the Mother of Pearl ones that I have. I have four of them with Mother of Pearl in it. As you can tell, I kind of like that. Different color schemes. Um, let's go to the newest Rough Rider in my collection. This is kind of like their Star Galaxy kind of theme going on here. And uh, surprisingly, they didn't put anything on the blades this time. But it has this cool, uh, cool like, copper mesh in there that you can see on, like, um, oh, what is the name of those knives that have it? I can't can't think of it off the top of my head but it looks really cool um I don't know why I can't think of the name off the top of my head there if I had um I had a certain box so oh uh Raffier Noble that's what it's called and that's kind of what this material is um and you can kind of see through it might be hard to tell on the camera you see that kind of dark you're actually seeing the back of um this handle and you're seeing all the way through and uh things like this material if you take them out in the sunlight they really pop but i mean they look cool in here as well they really pop out in the sunlight um here soon i will do a full review on rough rider knives probably specifically this one since i have the box sitting here right beside me and my overall review of the brand and stuff like that but this is mainly just a collection video. Um, here is the Moss Trapper, which um, some people are a fan of this one, some people aren't. This is kind of a personal thing, but it's got like this, uh, what I believe is bone here, like jigged bone, and they dyed it like this mossy collar. And they did some interesting things up here to the bolsters. Um, to kind of give it that kind of green look and feel. Okay, um, here is my Black Widow series. I love spiders. I love predators in general. Um, just always have um, spiders, snakes, all things like that. Um, but I'm very intrigued of how like spiders hunt and stuff like that. And uh, Rough Rider made a Black Widow series and you know, looks very cool, right? They got this uh, red material as the inlay in there, you know, with a picture of a Black Widow there and a Black Widow kind of in a spider web there on the blade. They did a really good job with this one, I think. Um, and the reason that I got this model is because they don't all have the Black Widow on one blade and the spider on the other one. Again, these ones, these bigger ones, are a little bit pricier. But when I say pricier, I mean like, let's say the Trapper's 14 bucks. That would make this one about 16, 18, maybe 20 at the max. Um, the next two Rough Riders are uh, Lockbacks. This is in their Copper series, if you can't tell. Um, some of the copper on this has patinaed, not all of it, but it looks very nice if you're a fan of copper, um, especially this black coated blade. I'm sure you're going to like this one. And then uh, had their, uh, what did they call this, like Davy Jones series or something like that, um, which is this kind of cool skull. I can't remember if it's the top of my head, uh, so don't quote me on this, but I think this like glows in the dark or something, which 
I may be wrong on that, but I thought I remembered that it did. So, but nonetheless, pretty cool, pretty cool looking, cool looking knife. Um, so that's all the Rough Riders. Now let me get to all the knives in my collection that are traditional or traditional like that aren't Rough Riders. So I've got what, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 traditional style Rough Riders in my collection. And, you know, if you take 11 times, you know, like, <clears throat> I mean, 11 times 10 is $110. Um, so they're not that expensive. So even if they all would have cost $20, 11 times 20, you know, what's that? 220 bucks. So that's not that much. And it really isn't um, for 11 knives. That's pretty cheap. Um, but anyways, let's keep going. This is one of the best traditionals I think I've ever gotten. Um, this is the Best Buy Damascus brands. Just a simple uh, wood bone brass bolster knife. But for this kind of a knife, and I know this is probably just Pakistan Damascus, but I'm telling you, this one's done really well. It's one of the best that I've seen in person. That's this kind of basic bone and brass with the Damascus blade. This one's done very well. And there's a reason I think that these not only got sold out fast, but they remain sold out because this brand did a really good job with theirs. So can't have a collection like this without a buck 110. Um, this is the one that's in my collection right now. I don't really carry it or use it or anything. Um, but I did get it as a Christmas gift one year and I still have it. So, you know, bucks, one tens are kind of a, a, what do you want to call like the old grandpa of the knife world? At one point in time, these were definitely the most popular knife probably that existed in the USA. But that was back in a time where modern style folding knives weren't really a thing. So. I have my one case knife here in this Patriotic Cure Knight. Um, got this from a friend. It's pretty cool. The little red, white, and blue. The blue is kind of the resin, and the red and white is kind of this weird material. But, uh, yeah, that's my, that's my case. Um, a couple, let's see, I got one from... Frost Cutlery. This is the Steel Warrior. Um, ooh, little blades tight. Yeah. Um, so, Frost did Cutlery is not... I would say they're close to Rough Rider standards, but not quite. But it had this cool red, white, and blue resin on this knife in particular. And... Uh, I liked it. As you can see, I'm never really taking the sticker off. It says 56 to 58 Rockwell. That's not necessarily very good, but <laughs> maybe for cheaper knives, that's okay. This knife literally, when I got it, cost about five bucks. Probably cost like eight dollars now. But I mean, that's kind of my point with these. Um, besides the book and the case, you know, a lot of these knives, they're inexpensive. Like you could get a lot of them. And this one I liked for the uh, gold, brown, and white resin this imperial knife um so it's the uh imperial charade company they don't have a half stop in them they kind of come out in a slow roll way like you can you can feel that they're a little cheaper but to be honest at least the rough riders come sharp case has been struggling with that for years and they're an american knife company and their knives cost you know three to four times more than rough riders in most cases um and yeah, I just really like the uh, the resin on this one. Necessarily say it's comfortable. Like you can kind of feel the edges and stuff aren't perfectly chamfered or anything, but I thought it looked cool. So ended up getting it. Then I have a Marbles imitation tortoiseshell, not real tortoiseshell. So everybody calm down. Um, but tortoise shell naturally is a very pretty material, and luckily they figured out how to imitate that material. 
give it this kind of a look. Um, and this one definitely looks cooler in person than it does on camera, I will admit. It's hard to really show that imitation tortoise shell on the camera. There, it just has Marvel's logo on the one blade there. Very nice, you can get this. Rough Rider has imitation tortoise shells as well, if you'd rather have a Rough Rider than a Marbles, but I liked how the Marbles one looked better, actually. Um, and the next two were kind of meh on the traditional side, but I figured I'd show them anyways. This is my Open L, and always explain this. Open L is kind of an interesting brand. They're made in France. Um, you can get some different engravings on the wood handles, but in France, you're not allowed to legally carry a locking knife, is my understanding, along with a lot of countries and even some states in America, I believe. Um, but France found a way around this. Um, so the knife can't engage on its own, like the lock on this knife can't engage on its own, which means it's legal if you can manually engage the locks. What you do, see the little end cap here? Turn it, okay? When it's turned, the knife can't come out. When it's turned this way, it can. So now we have the ability to pull the knife out. And let's pull the knife out here. And then you can take this and boop, turn it back into place. And look at that, the knife can't go back down. It's locked right here. And I always thought that was, that was cool. And they're called open nails. I will admit this thing didn't really come sharp but, you know, it was just a $20 knife that was made in France, and it's kind of an iconic knife, so I wanted one in my collection just to have one and to have a knife that's made in France. Um, yeah, you can see right there it's stamped, made in France. And yeah, I just thought the mechanic was cool. Maybe one day I'll try to sharpen it up and see how well it can hold an edge. Not 100% sure what the steel is on that, to be honest. And then I have one Finch, and I include Finch in this video because Finch has done a very great thing, and they have mixed modern and traditional knives into one, and I think that is awesome. Um, the designer of Finch is an American. He does OEM his knives from China, but you know, it's so hard to reverse flick on camera but you know his knives come with a lot of traditional knife material as you can see here he's got the pearl resin on this one specifically but he has a lot of knives with bone you know with uh, a bunch of different kinds of bones different kinds of resins um, I don't know if he's ever done mother of pearl I feel like I've seen at least one but uh, you can find a lot of the traditional folding knives like for example, a lot of the things that I've shown here, like, you know, kind of like jig bone stuff, he has that on his knives. Um, clearly he has resin, you know, and he tries to make a lot of them just have a more traditional look to them, but he keeps all the modern style with, uh, you know, bolster lock in terms of this exact one, and he puts titanium clips on them, and they have 154 CM blades and he keeps them, you know, under 150 bucks pretty much across the board. So yeah, if you like traditionals and you want a modern folding knife that still has a traditional look, I think Finch is a great way to go. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for my traditional collection. Um, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video uh consider subscribing i'm almost up to 500 and i will be doing a knife giveaway at 500 subscribers so um i'm at about 415 right now so we're getting real close and i really appreciate all you guys especially the ones that have been around for about a year uh, in my first 100 subscriber days um I'm shocked, honestly, that I'm almost at 500. It's blowing my mind, um, but I really appreciate it. I, tr I do show traditionals on my collection every now and then, but I will admit my channel mainly focuses on modern folding knives and some wild, crazy stuff that, you know, not many other people show on YouTube. So I like my knife collection to be unique, 
bit different. Um, as you can see here is an example by one that's sitting beside me. So yeah, um, but thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.